Welcome back to Golf Extra. The PGA Tour's elevated events have been seen as a huge benefit for many golfers, but not everyone. Recently, a major winner threw his opinion in the ring and made some waves in doing so. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now, let's get right into Stuart Sink's thoughts on the PGA Tour elevated events. With the eyes of the golf world trained on the PGA Live conflict and the resulting changes coming to the world of professional golf, the PGA Tour has reacted by creating several elevated events with smaller, star-laden fields and higher purses. While this strategy has been lauded by many of the top players, there remains a bit of a lack of consensus among the lower-ranking players about its merits. Count among those detractors Stuart Sink, a major winner and PGA Tour veteran. In recent comments, he expressed his displeasure with the elevated events, saying, If I was in the top 50, I would really like it, but I'm not, so I don't like it. Unfortunately, I do think it's probably the right thing to do for golf fans. If all the players play in those and we get great fields playing for a lot of money, then it's great. It's just I don't think it serves everybody, and PGA Tour kind of has been about doing the best for everybody, for all the pros and members. He continued, To me, it's a little bit out of balance. I understand where it all came from. We had to do something because we had a competing venture out there trying to swallow our players up. We had to give our players a reason to stay, so I get it. It's not easy, but where I'm sitting, I don't really love it. Sink raises a valid question. Are elevated fields really good for the competitive spirit of the game? He continued, To honor good finishes with the chance to move up into these signature events, I think it's good. One thing that personally I'm not for is I played in the first year of the elevated tournaments. They were mostly full field tournaments with cuts and all the top players played. I thought they were just absolutely brilliant. It's hard to convince me and a lot of the players that aren't in those fields why being a small field matters. That's where I stand on it. Sink finished his comments by saying, I'm just not convinced why an 80-man field is more elite than a 156-man field. I don't get it. While there are certainly golfers against the changes, there are also some for it. Take Max Homa, who is now a star on tour, but who was once relatively unknown. He gave his extended thoughts on the elevated events in a press conference last spring, saying, I love the new changes. The product is important. I think it's easy to frame these changes as a way to put more money in the top players' pockets, but it has been made to make it easier and more fun for the fans. He touched on Sink's criticisms, saying, I know it's low-hanging fruit to jump on. Oh, this is just a money grab. This is to make it better for the fans. It's a guarantee on who will be at the events and leaning more on the more there. It is more opportunity for the top players to battle it out late on Sunday. When you look back at times of Phil and Tiger, the two best players growing up for me watching, and they had like maybe two real battles. So we're going to have more of that. Homa also made a good point that this change affects the non-elevated events in making them potentially easier to win. The non-designated events are the same purses with, on paper, weaker fields. There's a lot of room for growth throughout that. You can play your way into the designated events. The part that's frustrating and maybe just simply misunderstood is that if we made these fields very large in these designated events, it would ruin non-designated events. It would ruin them. No one would play in half of them because it would no longer fit your schedule. Homa finished his comments by saying, I think that the tour's done a great job of looking into it. Seeing that 70 to 80 would be a great number to cut to make sure that we still have competitive events that are non-designated. Maybe not the top 50 big names, but big names will be keeping the sponsors and the fans happy with the parody. James Hahn, a fellow PGA pro, answered Homa's comments in short order with a very different opinion, saying, I mean, I hate the changes. I'm going to say exactly what 99.99% of fans said about players leaving for the live tour. If our players just said, we're doing this for the money, I would have a lot more respect for them. But how they're covering up what they're doing and trying to make it a thing about sponsors and fans and saving opposite field events, I think it's all BS. Han continued, all the big names that are talking about this new product, if you just came out and said, hey, we're doing this for the money, they want more guaranteed money. And this is another way to funnel more money to the top players in the world. I'd have a lot more respect for them. Right now, they're just covering their ass and saying everything that the PGA Tour basically has trained them to say, having taught them to say and try to make it not about the money when everyone knows 100% it's about more guaranteed money being funneled to the top players in the world. We've been talking about money for the last two years, and for them not to say that that's not the number one reason why they're making these changes, it's very, very hypocritical. 
Out of these golfers, though, none of them could actually affect change on the PGA Tour advisory board. One that could was Peter Malnati. Malnati had previously made this opposition to the elevated events known, but he eventually changed his tune in allowing them to go forward. In explaining his decision, he said, it was the only way to protect the little guys. If I fought for 120-man fields, we're going to end up with eight $20 million events on tour, and however many, you know, 26 $2 million events on tour, it just wasn't good. When I saw the numbers, you couldn't ignore it. Like, you couldn't just ignore what the regular event fields were going to look like if designated events had 120. Again, we don't even need to have that good of an imagination. All we need to do is look at Honda this year and see it obviously got screwed with the schedule. Given his previous stance, Malnati was asked what kind of reaction he got from his constituents and fellow PGA pros, to which he replied, probably similar to what you might see on Twitter, but it's amazing how quickly, like, I got guys that I really thought would firmly hate this and be like, oh, I get it, it's actually going to be okay. I thought there were going to be more designated events. This is hard to digest because it's a big departure, and it seems, on the surface, like it's only good for the big guys. And I just think, having given it a week to sink in, this helps not just the big guys, this is going to make this tour stronger from top to bottom. I know people aren't going to believe that at first, but it took a lot to change my mind. Melnati continued, I bet guys there might be a little bit more freaking out because just on the surface of it, you know, taking events that we've always played at 120 or bigger like Travelers and making them 70, mid-70-ish fields on the surface, it can only be taking playing opportunities away. But I think having been exposed now to the data and seeing what playing these eight events as small fields, what that does to the rest of the events on tour, the events that have been the bread and butter for the middle third and bottom thirds of the membership, it strengthens and allows them to thrive. In finishing his comments, Malnati said a couple things that we bet the whole PGA Tour could get on board with, meaning, of course, he wanted more money for everyone. About money, Malnati said, I want more of the members to be able to play $20 million purses. Like that's the whole point of the PGA Tour, to provide opportunities for the membership to earn the financial rewards of playing out here. So I'm like, that's our mission. Why are we even going to tell 50 guys, you don't get to play in these $20 million purse events? But it became really clear to me because if we make those events 120-man fields, they become the only events they have a chance to grow on tour. Will elevated events in smaller fields be good or bad for the PGA Tour? Will they prevent the loss of players to live golf? It's an interesting question, but for now, all we can say is time will tell. Comment with your thoughts and make sure to subscribe for more content like this.